Hi, this is DK for the tastesofindia.com and welcome to this quick video. In this video, we'll be discussing about how to start a food blog. Now, this is a food blogging guide from the tastesofindia.com and you can visit our website for more details on how to start a food blog. So, here we'll be discussing about every aspect of starting a food blog. One of the most common questions that we received from our readers is how to start a food blog. Now, if you are one of them, then this guide will help you get started. But before we begin, there are some basic things that you need to keep in mind. If your interest in starting a food blog stemmed out of any of the below reasons, like you're very much interested in cooking and you want to share your love with the rest of the community and at the same time you would also want to make money out of it or you saw a few food blogs out there that were earning like crazy and hence felt that this is the best niche to make some decent money in then there are some basic things that you need to keep in mind in either of the case you need to understand that money will not start flowing in from the night after you start your blog. Blogging requires a lot of perseverance and consistency to become a profitable business. You might have to invest some time of yours into building it without thinking about the returns and getting frustrated. So start with that frame of mind. Start as if you're doing it just for fun. Provide value to your readers and you will slowly find your blog making it big in your niche. Some of my students ask me how long before I start making money. That's a good question. But you might not like the answer though. This question is similar to asking me how long before my stomach is full. Only you are the person who will be able to answer it and it entirely depends upon your appetite and how much you can eat. Similarly, in blogging, your success entirely depends upon how much time you can invest and are you really taking action or just bench warming. While some of my students have tasted success in less than six months, it might necessarily not be the case. Now, if you're planning to start a food blog, then bear in mind that there is some investment also required. While there will be a lot of people who might tell you that you can start off for free, you need to understand that at some point later, you might want to move to a paid option because of the limitations you will find with the free options. And when you want to do that, you will find yourself in a lot of problems in moving from the free option to the paid option. At this point, I should also mention that while the term investment might sound as if you have to invest a lot of capital into starting your food blog, it actually isn't that complicated. You might want to keep aside about $100 to $150 as investment. That is the most that you will need. And then you need to invest some time of yours, as I said earlier in this video. That is the biggest investment. So before we start off, let me tell you about some of the absolutely essential resources that you will need to start a food blog. The first one is a domain name. A domain name is the name of your website. You can order your domain name from storesfordomains.com, which is a sister website of ours. We have some low cost domain names for you. And you can find a coupon code in the description box, which you can use to order your domain from stores for domains at a discounted rate. You will need a web hosting service. We recommend Bluehost. You will need a good theme for your blog. We recommend the Genesis framework from StudioPress along with the foodie child theme. Or you can go for the Theme X from Theme Forest, which also has a lot of customization and flexibility. You will need an autoresponder service. We recommend Aweber. You will need some photography tools. You can start with a simple point and shoot camera if you have one or if you have a good phone for phone camera that should also work and last but not the least and the most important of all you will need a complete business plan 
on how is it that you're planning to run your food blog. So let's start with the domain name. Now a domain name is the name of the website or the blog that you know it with. The domain name of our blog here is thetastesofindia.com. So you might want to pick a name that is easy to remember. So some points that you need to keep in mind when deciding your domain name are that the name should be an easy to remember name. You don't want to pick a complicated name. I would recommend that you preferably go for a .com as that is the most used TLD or top level domain. There are other options like uh, .org, .net, but we really don't recommend a .org or a .net for a food blog. I would recommend that you don't use hyphen or dash in your domain names. And I would also not recommend using numbers in your domain names because numbers in a food blog doesn't look nice. So pick a name that is easy to remember for your visitors and that is still catchy. So once you've picked your domain name, you need to get a hosting for yourself. Web hosting is one of the most important aspects of a successful website. If your hosting server is not fast enough and doesn't provide you some of the basic features like regular backup, spam protection, and an easy to use interface, then the hosting server is of no use. Hence, it is important that you choose your web hosting wisely. We recommend using Bluehost because they are very reliable when it comes to hosting and they are very easy to use and extremely economical as well. So what are the features of Bluehost and why is it that we are recommending Bluehost? Because Bluehost is very economical. An unlimited hosting plan comes for only $3.99 per month, which is probably one of the lowest in the industry. Their support is exceptionally good. They have a ticketing system. They have a chat support. They have telephone customer support. You can use any of these modes to get instant responses to any of the problems that you might land in. They have one of the best cPanel interfaces, which is very easy to use. cPanel can at times be very overwhelming and difficult to use, but Bluehost has a very easy to use cPanel interface. They also give you a free domain name with, your, with the hosting server. So if you're ordering a hosting server from Bluehost, you might not want to buy a domain name because you get a free domain name from them. And they also have some very handy add-ons to their hosting servers. So if tomorrow you want to pick any of these add-ons, you can easily pick that from directly from within their interface. So once your hosting is ready, you can start by installing WordPress on your domain name. Now we recommend WordPress because WordPress is one of the easiest, robust and best blogging platforms out there. You have a ton of customization and flexibility with WordPress and it is also very secure. And that is why we recommend WordPress. But depending upon your choice, you might want to go with Blogger as well. Blogger is a blogging platform from Google. But if you decide to go with Blogger, you will not need a hosting server because Blogger hosts all their blogs in their own servers. But one of the biggest challenges with Blogger is tomorrow if you want to shift to your own server, there is a ton of difficulty that you might face with when you're shifting your blogs from Blogger to a self-hosted platform. Once you've installed WordPress, you will need to do some cosmetics to it. You will need to beautify your blog so that it looks good. Now we start by picking a domain name uh, 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 sorry, uh, we start by picking a good theme for your blog because a theme is what gives the front end a beauty. So you might want to pick a good theme for your blog. We recommend Genesis theme framework along with the foodie blog theme. And uh, you know, if you don't want to spend too much, you can even go for the theme X from uh, Theme Forest. But if you want to just go with a free theme, that is also absolutely fine. You, you can pick a free theme from the WordPress repository and that should also work. But we would still recommend that if you want to go for a premium theme, you should go with Genesis theme framework from StudioPress because they have a lot of flexibility and a lot of customization features and your blog will look very unique. Now, once you've installed your theme, you can start installing some of these basic plugins. Now, these plugins will help you in optimizing your blog 
for search engines. It will also help you in spam protection and there are some other basic you know uh, aspect uh, basic things that you will need for your uh, recipe blog to work so these plugins provide you all of those functionalities so one of the most important plugin that is required is wordpress seo by yoast this primarily helps you in optimizing your blog for search engines the second one is jetpack jetpack basically gives you a lot of features like uh, sharing options it gives you uh, an option to minimize the size of the images that you host on your blog. It gives you spam protection and a lot of other features. The third plugin is Easy Recipe. Easy Recipe basically helps you add all the metadata that is required by most of these social media platforms so that your blogs can easily be picked by these uh, social media websites. Back WP Up is primarily a plugin that helps you back up your blog just in case if you end up in a situation where your server goes down or your blog is attacked by hackers you might need a backup of your blog and back WP up helps you uh, get that backup done the next plugin is thirsty affiliates thirsty affiliates is basically a plugin that helps you cloak your affiliate links affiliate links are normally very ugly and uh, it doesn't look too good so thirsty affiliate uh, affiliates pro basically gives you a good to uh, use and good looking uh, you know link instead of those ugly affiliate links the last plugin but very important plugin is sumomi now sumomi is a free plugin that basically uh, adds a lot of functionality like share buttons uh, it also gives you a functionality of pop adding pop up windows to your blogs now all of these plugins are absolutely free and you should be able to get them in the WordPress repository. You can search for them directly from your WordPress dashboard. So once you've set up your blog, you will need an autoresponder. If you want to make money with your blog, you will need to build a list of subscribers that are visiting your blog. And in order to store these subscribers, you will need an autoresponder. An autoresponder is a service that stores email addresses for you and sends out scheduled emails to your subscribers. We recommend using Aweber for your autoresponder needs because they are affordable and are also extremely easy to use. And finally, but the most important thing, you will need a complete business plan. Now, if you want to run your food blog as a real business, then you need a complete business plan. And your business plan must have the following three things definitely in it. The most important thing is a content calendar. Now content calendar basically is a calendar where you put the dates on which you're going to publish content to your blog, the dates on which you're going to publish content to your social media uh, websites and your, your complete content plan. So this calendar has to have all of the details about your content publishing, uh, content publishing calendar. Now, the second one is your promotion strategy. So how do you plan to promote your blog? You might plan to run ads. You might plan to promote it on social media website. You might plan to promote it by, on, by, using, by commenting on other uh, food blogs. So all that strategy has to be there in your business plan. The last one is your monetization strategy. So how do you plan to make money out of your blog? Is it through affiliate marketing? Is it through running ads? Is it through using AdSense or Chitika or any of these ad platforms? So that also has to be there in your business plan. Now, if you want to know and learn in detail, step-by-step -step method, how to go about setting up your food blog, then we recommend that you visit our blog at thetastesofindia.com for a detailed guide on how to start a food blog. There, you will find a lot of information along with a lot of videos which will take you through each step that we discussed in the previous slides. There are videos that will show you how to set up your hosting, how to map your domain name, how to install WordPress, how to install the themes, the plugins, and how to put all of this together to start off with your food blog. So visit thetasteofindia.com for all of these details. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share it with your friends and acquaintances. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and Pinterest. This video might just help someone who is as much interested in starting a food blog as you. 
we have put all the links to the resources that we discussed in the video in the description box below so if you want to order any of these resources you can just click the link and you will be taken to the order page now please understand that some of these links are affiliate links and we might get paid when you order from those links so it is entirely up to you if you want to use those links to buy any of those resources and we have also created a playlist for you where you will find all of these videos on installing WordPress on uh, mapping your domain name on installing your on running your WordPress on your hosting server and all of these things so you can check out each of these videos to understand each of these things in detail so don't forget to visit our website at http colon slash slash the tastes of india.com for more information